Today in the news, three gigahertz RDNA 3 isn't real, or is it? And the 4080 was spotted a couple of times. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Their RX 7000 series of GPUs has finally made its debut. We have the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT, both which look like pretty good contenders to compete with Nvidia's RTX 4080 16GB. Yes, I'm leaving the uh, RTX 4090 out of it because AMD said it themselves, or at least Frank Azor said it. And let's be realistic. Uh it's a 999 card. Um, it's not a 4090 competitor, which costs 60% more. Okay, this is a 4080 competitor. So let's be really crystal clear, the class here that we're talking about. Um, but you're gonna compete against a 4080 and be hundreds of dollars less expensive. I mean, that's a winning value proposition. Anyways, what I wanna talk about is a leak, or I guess rumor, that this GPU would hit three gigahertz. Obviously, now that the event is over, uh, when we look at the official specs from AMD, this was debunked. The 7900 XTX has decoupled clocks, but neither hits three gigahertz. The shader clock is up to 2.3 gigahertz, while the front end runs at 2.5 gigahertz. The 7900 XT, being a lower tier card on the other hand, obviously is going to be slower. So no 3 GHz GPUs from AMD? Well, I wouldn't say that just yet. First of all, the advertised clocks are very often the most generalized case scenario for a given chip. With Nvidia, they have the uh, GPU boost technology, which if the card is cool enough and has the power available, well, it's going to boost past its rated boost clock. AMD doesn't have a name for it, but if you give it the power, the temperature, and the workload that is suitable for it, the RX 6000 series will do the same. A 6900 XT, for example, is rated for up to a boost clock of uh, 2250 megahertz with a game clock of uh, 2015 megahertz. But when you're actually gaming, it can reach up to 2520 megahertz, a heck of a lot higher than its original game clock. And I'm sure that we'll see the same behavior with RDNA 3 GPUs. Also, we got proof from AMD themselves about the three gigahertz. Here's a slide of a block diagram from AMD's event. Not the actual event that you and me can watch, but they do these other presentations for days after the reveal. And this looks like one of the uh, slides that was offered during one of these presentations. So here's what we got. Architected to exceed three gigahertz. So case closed, right? Well, yeah, AMD confirms it. Now, does it mean that your GPU will be constantly running at three gigahertz? Hell no. Just like how single threaded workloads will often reach higher clock speeds on your CPU compared to a full load, the same is true here. Specific workloads are probably going to move the needle closer and closer to three gigahertz. Look at this slide that I showed here earlier about the 6900 XT. There's a range of clocks here for 3D workloads, so Playing one game might bring you to 2.7 gigahertz, while, I don't know, doing an AI task might actually make you boost to three gigahertz. Who knows? And there's also the point of Navi 32. We're talking about the architecture itself when we say that RDNA 3 is architected to exceed three gigahertz. Navi 32, which is a different die, could have way higher clock speeds. We saw this happen with the Navi 22 chip. The 6700 XT and 6700 had way higher stock clock speeds compared to Navi 31, AKA the 6800, 6800 XT, 6900 XT, 6900 50 XT 68. All that just to say, guys, that the dream ain't over. 3 gigahertz is still definitely in the books. Next, we got some RTX 4080 news. The GPU is still unreleased, but we're starting to see some benchmarks fall through the cracks. First, there was a Geekbench 5 run. The RTX 4080 scored 249K, 301K, and 149K in the OpenCL 
CUDA and Vulkan API tests. If we compare that to other GPUs through the same scores, well, it beats the 3090 Ti by about 5 to 15 percent, and the RTX 3080 between 30 and 45 percent. That's an impressive generational leap. Of course, Geekbench isn't a gaming benchmark, so let's look at another benchmark run. This time from Mega Size GPU over on Twitter, who got his hands on TimeSpy and TimeSpy Extreme runs of the GPU. The graphics score for the regular TimeSpy was 28,599 points. That's about 30% faster than an RTX 3090 Ti. Now, this is really impressive. The same goes for that GPU in the TimeSpy Extreme tests. It's about the same difference. That leak, by the way, is where we see the RTX 4080 boost all the way up to 2.9 gigahertz during one of the benchmark runs. What's impressive is that it clocks that high while respecting its TDP. No overclocks here. So yeah, cool card. I still think the pricing is ridiculous though, but yeah, I mean, come on. The 7900 XTX is probably going to destroy it. I mean, yeah, I'm speculating here, but it looks like it's going to perform way better in raster performance according to all of the, you know, estimations that people have done. And it's going to be, what was it, $200, $300 less? Yeah. Anyways, let's move on. Moving on, you guys have been super supportive when it came to my live streams. I did a couple and every time I had somewhere between, I don't know, 400 to like 700 viewers. And I was wondering, would you guys be open for me to open a streaming channel? Um, I'd be able to do it a couple of times every week and uh, we could talk game, we could talk PCs, we could talk other things. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. All in all, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Let me know down below for the streaming thing. Take care.